Well, hello there. Let's just chat about the Instacart lawsuit. Quite interesting. Instacart is a shopping app where people can order their groceries. And uh, people go out and use their own cars or gas, their car insurance and everything and their time to go pick up groceries for people that order them on the app and then they uh, have an option to tip the shopper. Um, what is unfortunate is a lot of these apps uh, don't really give all the tips to the driver. Um, DoorDash is one. Uh, you can look at all their pay models throughout the website and their advertisements and they say you make ten dollars an hour well I worked to start up Biloxi in Mobile for DoorDash and I, I'd sat there you know ten hours a day and get no no orders or one order and um, I didn't get anything unless I did an order um, and uh, uh, you know, that that's not right. But DoorDash has like 10 different explanations about how they do their pay. The latest, most latest one is we pay a dollar per uh, delivery plus 100% of the customer's tip. And that's not true either because it's very obvious the tips are pooled. I've had numerous customers mention to me, why well, I left a $20 tip or a $50 tip. And, you know, when you get a lot of people saying that, it makes you really think that the tips are being hijacked. And DoorDash admits it on their website saying, uh, we take tips and put them together to help other DoorDash orders so that they're a little bit higher pay. Well, I mean, this isn't fair. Um, it's really better for the customer to tip cash, tip cash, period. Because uh, we, we just aren't going to see it most of the time. Or any of it. We don't have a clue. We don't see the original order. We don't see the original tip. We don't see the original amount of food purchased. And the original fees that are paid for the delivery. And DoorDash just got like a $5 billion backing. And they asked Tony Zhu on TV what he was going to do with that money. And uh, he really didn't say much. Um, I was hoping that they would get the pay higher because there are dashers in places that are doing like three and four dollar orders. I've yet to see that, and the lowest order I've ever seen is like five ninety seven two times ever. I have seen that, um, and that's obviously where the customer removes the entire tip, um, and uh, that's not fair. Um, and, uh, you know, it, the food will be like a $20 hamburger, and then we get paid like five bucks. Um, so, uh, you know, and you could be driving anywhere from two miles to 49 miles for delivery, is they'll try to suck your you into that. But um, uh, I've never worked Instacart. I had considered it. Um, I watched a lot of vlogs on YouTube about Instacart, and um, it's just not clear enough for me of exactly how they're paying and what they're doing. Um, and to me, it looks like a lot more book work than any of the other food delivery apps because I would have to have a copy of every order and how many items I delivered and all that kind of stuff to keep up with my taxes and seeing my pay and seeing my daily average and sales and all that kind of thing um, so this lawsuit which apparently started in 2017 I guess they've had a few of them for Instacart and uh, this big one it came about around in 2017 around January February and has recently pretty much settled in 2018 and was in favor of the shopper people that go out to get those groceries and deliver them to the customers. Now, uh, here's the thing. 
it was a class action lawsuit. So a lot of people were jumping and going, oh, how much money do I get? When do I get it? And there's other vloggers on YouTube talking about this article. Um, and they don't have the news. I mean, yeah, you could say what you feel like saying, but what's the bottom line? When everybody clicks on that, and what if they're an Instacart delivery person, where's the answers? Where's their money? What's the deal? Well, I'm going to tell you, when you do a class action lawsuit, they gather up everybody they can gather up, friends and co-workers, whatever info they can get, to sign on to the lawsuit. And it goes class action. And, and uh, you know, they fight it for a long, long time until somebody gives up or the court has deemed so. It's usually when somebody gives up and they offer money. Usually, you know, companies won't pay huge money to keep dragging it out, dragging it out, dragging it out because there's so many lawyers involved. And when they lose, they have to pay both sides lawyers, their lawyers and the people fighting them lawyers. And really, who benefits in it all is the lawyers. The lawyers get millions. Um, this particular lawsuit, my understanding is that the shoppers, they're talking like, you know, the settlement's in a few hundred, you know, a hundred, two hundred, whatever. It's in the hundreds. That's it. Because um, the lawyers made the money on it. Um, but it got somebody's attention. The unfortunate thing is that, that now that the lawsuit has been done, that the Instacart shoppers are claiming they're getting lower pay. Well, yeah, I mean, the squeaky, squeaky wheel gets the grease, but sometimes it doesn't work out as good. Um, again, I'm going to tell you, if you're a customer of any of these Postmate, Caviar, Instacart, DoorDash, any of that, it's way better if you tip the delivery person in cash. Because we... Don't know what you tipped, honestly, for your order, and it appears we're not getting it. And um, these companies don't give us a gas card. They don't give us uniforms and hot bags and coolers. They don't, um, uh, you know, pay us by the hour or pay us mileage. We're basically independents. With DoorDash, you're independent. So, you know, doing an itemized tax return quarterly or yearly is the benefit uh, where you can write off, you know, your car payments, your uh, car maintenance, your car insurance, um, your gas, your mileage, car depreciation. Um, but that's for the people that do a fully itemized tax return through a CPA or they know how to do it themselves. I would never risk doing my own taxes because... Um, it's worthless. Uh, CPAs have to be updated every year and there's new laws every year. So it's well worth it to pay a CPA, you know, a hundred bucks or better to do your taxes. And when they do it, that's shipped in right away. And in 14 days, you get your check. If you do it with these loan shark companies, they're called these big tax firms that say, we'll give you an instant refund and all that kind of stuff. And you're paying for that. You're losing, you know, 100 to $500 to get that rapid refund garbage. And um, you're stupid. Can't you use that $500 or something? I mean, you want to get stupid? Buy a big TV for $500. I mean, you just threw that money away to get rapid refund. Why? When in 14 days you'll get your money back from the IRS. I mean, be real. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize that. It puts the CPAs out of business when you use those loan shark tax people uh, in the grocery stores and whatever. Um, uh, you know, and, and a lot of those just aren't as accurate as using a CPA who studies every year and goes to meetings every year to update. I used to be engaged to a CPA, so I know a lot about all that. And, and I just... I would never do my own taxes. I would always take them to a, a certified public accountant, CPA. And and they're really nice people. You go in there and ask them how much it costs. They usually charge per tax form of the year for whatever, you know, jobs you work to get a tax form for each job. And, and they'll usually, you know, charge you for each one of those. If you come in with only one because you've only worked one job all year, they charge you a rate for that. Um, and depending, you know, on how much 
stuff you have with delivery drivers there's a lot and you're not going to go into a cpa and plop a hefty bag full of receipts and garbage on his desk and go okay and then here's you know my information and here's all my receipts they're going to be pissed i have a blog about this on youtube of how to set up your stuff for your taxes so you can be, pre be prepared and you can hand over you know a big shoe box to a cpa and let them work it because it's much easier when it's in order um and it's cheaper for you and quicker and um they can do it in a heartbeat i mean doing personal people's taxes with a cpa versus a corporate cpas love that it's quick clean ba boom you know well worth it and it's really cheap now um uh i don't know about the exact situation for the class action lawsuit for instacart um it's probably geared towards all the people that filed within that class action lawsuit but i will tell you um that what i would do if i was somebody at work for instacart and just heard about this and want to know if i was getting money back i would contact the law firm that filed this last case and and see what they say if it's for everybody and they need to add you in or if it's only for those people but bear in mind it's not thousands of dollars the the lawyers made the money on this deal and the news and all that and um it gets them business for future lawsuits which i think doordash is probably going to be the next one it just looks that way um but anyway i'm going to give you um the law firm's name that handled this last lawsuit and their phone number and email so you can contact them. And it's A R N S Law Firm. And their phone number is 1 415 495 7800. Their email is SSD at a R N S L A W dot C O M. Okay. And I would try those resources and see what I could find out. But uh um uh as far as uh DoorDash is concerned, um there there was an interview um at the time of this lawsuit with some of the other food companies food delivery companies and that um doordash was one of them and they talked to a lady at doordash that she did not want to comment later they got comment from her that says our employees understand the contract and there will be no pay changes we're not seeing that at all in the future well i don't know um you know doordash does pay higher than all these other places uh and that's very obvious but it also depends on the area because i listen to drivers talk about how they get five dollar orders and and stuff and i that's insane um i work in areas where most of the orders are ten dollars and over um i've done orders as high as twenty dollars each uh and uh you know it it's just sad that we don't get to see the original customers tip and it's sad that they pull the tips at DoorDash. And if you don't believe it, start researching it on the internet and talk to other drivers. I'm telling you, the tips are pulled at DoorDash to pull up the prices of the other orders for the other drivers to give them a little bit more money. You know, um, I'm not really game for that. I did an order in Pensacola, Florida uh, for a longtime medical doctor. And a $800,000 home, which that's a very expensive home in Pensacola, um, who orders frequently uh, from a pizza place and orders $100 in pizzas. And um, it's a big deal to carry those pizzas, okay? Um, it was lucky I brought a van that day instead of my white Mercedes. Um, and... Uh, you know, when I delivered the food, that order was like um, $9 or something. And it was like a total five-mile gig 
But when I delivered, I was really disappointed because, I mean, it was like a moving truck moving all these pizzas out. And then, you know, I had to, you know, give them napkins and paper plates because a lot of these places don't give paper plates for the food. And, and um, you know, I had peppers and cheeses and all that kind of stuff. And um, so I was really sad because there was two of us working it. And um, it... it I, I was really disappointed when there wasn't any thank you and there wasn't any cash tip for a hundred dollars in pizzas. Man alive. And this pizza place, their pizzas are relatively cheap. And um they're homemade. And anyway, and it's cheap to make pizza anyway, it's in the pennies. That was really sad. Um you know, plus we had to wait like an hour because this guy's wife calls and harasses the pizza company. Um, after she orders with DoorDash, she calls the restaurant, which you're not supposed to call the restaurant. Everything's done through DoorDash. Leave the restaurant people alone. And so she uh, um, uh, calls and harasses them and goes through every single item on the order to find out the exact price. Then goes back to DoorDash and argues with them. And says, well, if you give me this at a better deal and this at a better deal. And I don't think these people get it. You know, you have a delivery system that has to have a server. And, and you know, they have a website that you can order from. Somebody's got to run the website. Somebody's got to answer the phones. Somebody's got to send the orders. Um, somebody's got to call in orders a lot of times, that, you know, to the restaurants because they don't have you know, computer system, they only use telephones, some of them, and, um, uh, then you got a driver and all this other stuff, I mean, we've got to be paid, you know, and, in you know, a seven to eight dollar delivery charge for food from wherever you want it, because these people don't deliver, uh, is pretty cheap, you know, I remember back when I used to order pizzas drunk when I used to drink. And I would go, well, hell, I'll just order a pizza from Pizza Man. And hell, it took two and a half hours to get the food. I had to call back three times ago, like, where's my food? And then you tipped the guy real good when he showed up. You know, and you just tipped him less if he didn't show up quickly. But that waiting two, two and a half hours and keep calling back going, where's the pizza? I mean, it, that's like so far gone. These delivery systems are really quick. I know DoorDash is. DoorDash generally doesn't send the driver until the order is supposed to be ready. Um, but there's problems with that, too. DoorDash is getting so big, there's getting to be flaws in the company. Um, and it does get problematic at times. And not just in new open areas, areas that have been around. Um, uh, and then at times that the computer will go down. Um, I have experienced the server going down twice in just the last six months. And it's unreal when the server goes down. Your credit card will not work to buy the customer's food. You can't text DoorDash. You can't call them. Um, your app is stuck. You can't get out of the order. You can't cancel it. And it can go on for an hour or all night. It's a mess. Um, but I think it's just because, you know, it's getting so big. And there's so many people riding on the server. It's just not big enough. Um, but... Uh, you know, it, it is problematic. Um, I do disagree with the, the various payment descriptions of how DoorDash does pay. There's so many different descriptions in their website, in their advertisements. Um, guaranteed $10 an hour, guaranteed $20 an hour. Uh, and then when they send you an order, every once in a while I'll say guaranteed pay. What is that? Because... I've only seen about two of those, and they don't make any sense to me at all. I did a delivery just recently where that came through for a Mexican restaurant, and they sent me the order an hour ahead of time. I, I didn't know until I accepted it, and it says, pick up, da-da-da, in an hour. And I'm like, oh, hell. And so I wasn't quite sure where the restaurant was at because somebody didn't put the address in there. It reads, uh... Uh, drug tests, uh, nail hiring, da da da. It doesn't have any address or phone number, and I'm like, what the hell? 
So I go ahead and head out because I want to wait on this order because sometimes they are ready earlier. Um, and I'll explain that in another vlog, how they do food stuff. So I go ahead and I head out and I get about halfway in in town to the town where they're supposed to be at in Florida. So I text DoorDash and um, wait for them to answer. And I said, look, what's the address of the restaurant? Because on the app it says a six-mile order, which that was a lie. The only six mile they were looking at was the six mile to the customer house um, because there was no address for the restaurant. So he calls the restaurant. I have to wait for that. And then he sends me a message back with the address. I GPS the address and it won't come up on a $300 Garmin. Um, I say, well, uh, you know, just give me the phone number. I'll call him. So they gave me the phone number and I call and it's busy, 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 busy. Finally, I get them. So now, you know, 30 minutes has transpired. So, and I'm not even at the place. So, uh, I call them. Turns out that sucker is way out in Blue Water Bay. And I'm like, oh, hell. So, I've got like a 12-mile drive. And then a 6-mile drive after that to the customer's house. That makes no sense. Then I get out to the restaurant and all the food is sitting there. Just sitting there. It's not under heat lamp or anything. And it's a huge amount of food. It's like $100 worth of Mexican food. And so uh, I I get, you know, like three different people go, well, here, let me get the payment for that. And I'm like, I'm not paying for anything until we check this order. I can't. Because we can only run this credit card one single time. And if there's any problems, then I have to contact DoorDash and authorize another payment if there's something that's not right or missing. Well, the first girl, she doesn't want to help go through the order because we're not allowed to touch the food at all. So we have to have someone that's a member of the staff there to open the trays and check and go through it with us as we check the items off on our app to make sure we have everything they order or we, our ratings get trashed. You know, even though we didn't prepare the food or any of that, our ratings get trashed when things go wrong with the food. It shouldn't be that way, but it ends up that way. So anyway... Um, and the sad part was the customer, you know, the order was set for an hour before pickup. Um, and a lot of times that's a restaurant doing that. Um, and it's horrible because the customer's waiting on that. Um, and anyway, so the second person, they sent a second girl over and she looks like, to me, it's, she appeared to be brand new and didn't know what I was talking about. And I said, okay, um, will you you know, go through this order with me. And she's like, well, well, it's all here in these bags. And I said, look, it's a hundred dollar order. I've got like, you know, 15 items on my list. You know, dinners, appetizers, sides, this banquet full of food. And so, um, she's like, well, you know, okay. She goes through to one bag and goes, well, you know, this is, this is this. So I'm checking on an app. And then she's, I said, okay, now we'll move that bag over. And, and then we go, you know, I said, okay, and where's this and this? And she says, oh, uh, well, it's in that other bag. I said, no, 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 no. Let's take all this apart and let's go through each item so I can make sure because it's not going to be a good thing when I deliver a $100 order to some people for a whole life banquet and we're missing parts. You know, I get in trouble and you don't want the customer calling you at the restaurant when they need to be calling DoorDash to complain. So let's just check this before I pay for it. It's just like as if I was a customer coming in here to buy this food. I mean, I don't know what the problem is where these people just want to throw the food at you and just charge up a big amount. And then what if you get in trouble with DoorDash if it's wrong? What if you get in trouble with the customer if it's all the wrong food? I have actually walked into a Mexican restaurant in Fort Walton and they were trying to give me somebody else's food. Okay, which was a much bigger order than what I had and um, wanted me to pay for it. Honest to God. And I withheld the card saying, we've got to go through this order and check it. When we start to check it, it didn't even match. And then they realized that that wasn't the order. That's really scary. But anyway, so back to this other order. So finally they bring me the third person. And she's wonderful. And she totally understands what's going on. And and they're still hassling me to take the card and, and, and charge it. And I'm like, no, not until we check this order. Then I'll be happy to pay. So, she goes through the whole thing. We go through it item by item by item. 
and we're missing one quarter of the entire food. One quarter of it. So now she has to go back to the kitchen in a big time hurry and try to get them to make this stuff up. And um, so I have to wait like another 20 minutes. And um, then uh, we go through the order again and check it. I give them the card to run the card. Card goes through successfully, tax and all, thank God. And um, because they only send us money for the order when, when they send us to a restaurant. They don't just keep money on there. It's only the amount of the order. And if you ever charge anything over that order, um, you're going to get fired. So, uh, anyway, but, um, so they run the card and, uh, you know, I brought, you know, like three hot bags in and a cold bag and my God, I just didn't even have enough bags and coolers because the rest were in my car and that night I brought my van, oddly enough, which I, that was a good thing because I had filled every hot bag I own, every cooler I own. And I still had stuff left um, that didn't need to be heated or cooled. Um, and, oh my gosh, what a mess. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I had texted a customer along that, um, is this required? To let them know I'm still waiting on their food and all that. Uh, it was really a huge order. I mean, it's a banquet full of food. And so... Um, I go to deliver, and it was really dark by the end, and hard to find a place. Um, finally found it. Um, the people were watching for me, waved me down. And then we had rotated people to come out to my vehicle to get this food, um, to take it to the door, which was like 20 foot away, um, in a very gracious home on the water. Um, and, uh, the lady was kind of snippy with me, which was really sad, but, you know, all that food, and then, you know, DoorDash paid me, like, like nine ninety seven, And then, like, a $2 bonus peak bay. Um, the order took from, I received the order at, like, 4.33. Um, the order was not finished till like, 6.15. Uh, and then I spent another 30 minutes or hour with DoorDash on text, and then finally got them to call me to discuss it with them. Because... I mean, I didn't think it was fair pay. There was no address for the restaurant initially because they screwed that up when they put it onto the app. Um, <coughs> and the mileage was entirely wrong. Total mileage was listed as six, which I was wrong. Um, and uh, uh, it took too many hours to fill with this food. Plus, they postponed me for an hour to pick up, uh, which I was there a little bit before that. But I had to spend so much time in the restaurant you know, like 30 minutes playing the game because um, they didn't have all the food ready when they said it was ready because they were missing all kinds of stuff. But the problem is that um, I, I just don't feel it was fair to tie me up for all that time. And especially when they sent me the order to be picked up in an hour, I can't get any more orders through DoorDash when they do that. My phone is just stopped on that order. So I'm losing a whole hour's worth of money while waiting for an order to be ready. And I have never, ever seen... An order had to be picked up in an hour on DoorDash. Never in my life. Usually DoorDash doesn't even give you enough time. They're like, the order should have been picked up five minutes ago. And it's like, oh, my ratings are ruined already before I've even started. <laughs> and you just hope for the best. You hope the customer really gives you a great rating, you know. Other than a cool cash tip. I do make a lot of good cash tips with DoorDash. Customers are very gracious. They'll tip on the app and tip me. I don't even have to ask because my service is impeccable. I text that customer every step of the way. I have a good presentation. My car is clean inside and out. I look clean and decent. I'm proper with the customer, just like I'm waiting on them in a restaurant. The food is absolutely hot when they get it. The food is absolutely cold when they get it. Everything's the way it's supposed to be. And whatever the restaurant doesn't supply, I've got the supplies. Okay? Um, there's a, a restaurant in Fort Walton that has a linen tablecloth, fine dining, and suddenly they're into the pizza thing. And do you know they don't give you plates? They won't give you napkins. They won't give you peppers and cheese. Hey, what the hell? So I got to supply all that out of my pocket. Yeah, it's a tax write-off. But, you know, a lot of these customers don't understand that. They take it for granted. You know? Um, 
But anyway, um, that's, that's what's up. And check on your Instacart thing. See if there's anything there for you. But I imagine that unless you had filed into the class action lawsuit, that you will have zero dollars and zero cents. But now, you know, they could be having an auditor go through there and go through every account. And if every person that worked there was fired there or still works there, and go back and audit and see what is due to that worker, um, that could be possible. But generally, class action lawsuit is only the people who signed on to be in that lawsuit. So if you had received a letter in the mail, a notification over um, the, the Internet, uh, you should have answered it. You know, otherwise, that number I gave you and that email, if it were me, I would contact the law office through that that handled this last case and see if there's anything can be done. Um, you know, lawyers love those kind of cases. They love car accident crap and they love class action lawsuits because they're going to get a whole bunch of people signed up, fight for a bunch of money, and the lawyers making the millions in that, other than the fact they make really good publicity. Very good publicity for themselves, so that people will recognize them as iconic lawyers. Um, it's like the stripper lawsuits. Um, uh, there's an excellent lawyer in um, Pensacola, Talbot Law Firm, that handles the strip club lawsuits in several states. He'll take on any state he can get. And um, uh, he's, you know, famous from the first Sammy's lawsuit, you know. And uh, he keeps on going. As long as there's people to file, by God, you'll keep filing. So, check on that. I wish you luck. And there's more of the facts that you need instead of just a bunch of people yapping about Instacart uh, lawsuit and all that. Um, because all you're doing is creating a havoc. You're going to get a bunch of people on YouTube that are commenting going, so where's my money? You know? And that gets deep. Um... I want to tell people the truth. I'm not just reading off an article to get views and get monetized. I just want to tell people the truth and and uh, um, try to help them. I'm not here for the advertisement, but I'm here to help you. So, uh, no, I'm not a liar. It should have been. I got five college degrees. I really should have been. I do know a lot about law and procedures and things, but I'm not a liar. But this is what, you know, I know. And I have read just a tiny bit about this lawsuit, some other lawsuits. It's not the only one. And, um, you know, uh, some uh, stuff online about, you know, DoorDash, have how they responded when being questioned during the Instacart lawsuit because everybody thinks they're next. Which it could be, I don't know. But, you know, that, that might be great too and then things would be fair. Because sometimes these orders for DoorDash just aren't right.